everyone! Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about Disney Cruise Line. We're going to be talking about Disney Cruise Line Alaska itineraries. I'm going to walk through the three different itineraries and some of the really cool things to do in the ports. I'm Christina. I'm a traveler, a planner, and most importantly, a mom. I'm sharing my best tips to make traveling as a family a little less stressful. So put down your phone, pack your bags, and let's showcase the world. Alaska cruises have been popular for a long time, but typically when you head on an Alaskan cruise, you're going to end up with a lot of retired folks on on their Alaska adventure. So when you're look, booking cruise lines like Princess and Norwegian, it's important to know that that's the demographic you're going to hit. They're not necessarily going to have great activities for kids. Along comes Disney, and now they have the best Alaska cruise for families. I love the other cruise lines. I will recommend other cruise lines um, for you depending on what type of party you are or um, what itinerary you're looking at, at. If you are going on an Alaska itinerary and you have kids under the age of 12 with you, I would definitely do a Disney cruise. It is worth the money for the way that they involve the kids and they get them um, and the activities on board and all the learning experiences for them. So let's jump in. Um, when you take a Disney Alaska cruise, you're gonna depart from Vancouver. There are some Alaska cruises that depart Seattle, but all of the Disney cruises depart from Vancouver. So you are going to need a passport. I highly recommend a passport no matter what cruise you're doing in case there are any issues and you have to get back home, but they are not legally required if you're doing a closed loop cruise from a American port. This is not an American port, Vancouver is a Canadian port, you're gonna need your passport. So you're gonna be on the Disney Wonder, that is the second ship in Disney's fleet. It is a magic class ship. It's gonna be a little smaller than the Dream or the Fantasy, but they have some great, great exclusive shows. And they have Tiana's Place, which is a restaurant that is only on the Disney Wonder. So really fun things to do on board. But if you're going to Alaska, you're not really concerned with all the things to do on board. You want to know where you're going. So you have a few options here. You have a five night cruise that has a few sea days, but you also have port days in Tracy Arm and Ketchikan. You have a seven night cruise with a few sea days. You add, um, you have Tracy Arm and Ketchikan and you add Skagway and Juno. And then you have the nine night, which is a awesome awesome itinerary and gets you to a lot of the places you want to go on the inside passage you have tracy arm catch can skagway and juno so the same as the seven night but you add ports in sitka victoria and icy strait you also get to the get to the Hubbard Glacier. So if seeing the glaciers is super important to you then you definitely want to do the night night so those are the places you go. What do you get to do in each of them? Tracy Arm Fjord is a, um, not a port, it's just a destination, so you're not getting off the trip in Tracy Arm. It's in all three of the itineraries, and it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful location with waterfalls and glaciers and mountains and wildlife and the ship is going to get as close as possible to all these things so that you can see them and there's a environmentalist on board and they'll talk you through everything you're seeing and you can ask questions and it's a really 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 cool experience so if you're doing the five night you just have tracy arm and ketchikan um ketchikan is very much rooted in its Native American culture. You have um, the first ever salmon saltery in Ketchikan, but you also have a lot of people who are trying to stay true to their Native heritage. So you have um, crab fishermen, and there's a adventure where you can go out on the crabbing ship and um, get your own crabs and then have dinner. Being someone from New England who I get to do that with lobsters, I go on the lobster boat and eat lobster either on the boat or later that night for dinner, 
doing that with the Alaskan king crab seems incredible to me. You also have um, lumberjack shows, and there's a really cool float plane bear adventure. So Ketchikan is really a cute little town. You don't necessarily need to do an excursion at Ketchikan. You can just walk around and, and experience that Native American history and culture, and um, it's very authentic there. Or you can go on one of the really cool adventures as well. But if you're doing a seven night or nine night, a lot of these ports have similar adventures. So you want to take pick the ones that are unique to ports and then fill in the wildlife kayaking ones um, as you go. So you have, um, so when you go on the seven night, you add Skagway and Skagway is all about the gold rush. It is seven blocks of these pristine 19th century buildings. Um, they are, they've not even been restored because they've been kept up so well. It's like stepping back in time. And there is a Klondike Gold Rush National Park and you have a Yukon Railroad up to the White Pass. Or you can do dog sledding or gold panning or really cool things that um, are very historic to our our country's history and it's all about the gold rush and um, what kind of made that town happen. Um, then you also have Juneau. Juneau is the capital of Alaska and Juneau is the largest state capital. It is the same size and area as the entire state of Delaware. That like just seems crazy to me. I would love to know what the size of Delaware is in relation to Rhode Island, because I know Rhode Island is the smallest state, and having a entire city be the size of Rhode Island is just mind-boggling. So you have Juneau. Um, it is the capital of Alaska, so you have a lot of the different elements from all of the different towns in Alaska. You have um, Gold, the gold rush history, you have mining, you can, there's a mining adventure, there's sawmilling, canning, and fishing, and all of the recreational activities like hiking, and kayaking, and fishing, and skiing, and whale watching, and wildlife viewing. Juno has so much going for it. So if there's one of those really unique adventures like um, canning, or mining that is a part of the history you definitely want to hit that in Juneau if those don't really seem of interest to you it's a great place to do one of their wildlife activities whether it be dog, dog sledding or fishing or something like that um, so if you do the five or the seven night those are the only places you go now we get to talk about the places that are available if you add the extra nights and do the nine night including icy straight point this is one of my favorites that I want to go to so bad because it is the largest Tlingit um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly but it is the largest village of the Tlingit clan and it's a Native American um, and it's still an active Native American community with a logging town um, and there's really cool activities here there's ATVing there's zodiac adventures zodiacs are like those inflatable boats halibut fishing so this is a little bit different you're gonna find crab fishing and salmon fishing and the other ports but this one you specifically go halibut fishing I love halibut way more than salmon so I think I would be interested in this there's also the lar world's largest zip rider so it is six people across and it is long so you can go through the rainforest who knew there was rainforest in Alaska and see the really really incredible wildlife from the zip line you also have Sitka. Um, I am every time I say Sitka, I think about the proposal with Sandra Bullock. Uh, but I also my cousin's college roommate was from Sitka, so we got to learn some really cool things about Sitka. Sitka has both a Native American heritage as well as a Russian heritage. So it was the capital of the Russian outpost in Alaska. So it is really, really a unique cultural heritage there and they are known for their art museums. They have incredible art museums, history museums, and culture that you're just not going to find in other places in Alaska because it has that Russian influence. You have, so you have 
museums, <laughs> you have culture, you have beauty, you have wildlife, and you have cuisine. So Sitka is like top of my bucket list destinations. Um, the art museums, if you're interested in art, hiking, kayaking, fishing, they have really cool wildlife reserves here. Um, they have a orphaned bear habitat. So it's bringing the bears, it's their natural habitat, but it's a reserve for the bears who have been orphaned and um, couldn't really survive on their own out in the wilderness. So they bring them to this reserve and they're able to live in their natural habitat, but to still be cared for. So it's really, really a unique destination and it um, would be really interesting to learn and see the bears. You also have um, a rapt raptor center and that is for the injured bird of prey and they bring them here until they're rehabilitated and able to go back out into the wild. So you're going to find a lot of bald eagles here. Um, and then they have a marine wildlife center which has all of their different marine animals and then you can go out on a catamaran and see them in their natural habitat. Um, so you're going to see whales and my one of my favorites, otters, um, the wild otters. So if you're interested in animals, Sitka is definitely has a lot of opportunities for you, but I also just want to walk around and see all the arts and culture and eat the food. So um, when I go on my Alaska cruise, I'm going to have a hard time picking what I want to do in Sitka. <laughs> the last place you get to see on the, your nine night cruise is the Hubbard Glacier. It is 76 miles long seven miles wide and 600 feet tall. And again, very much like the Icy Strait, you're going to have naturalists and um, other people on board telling you what you're seeing, instructing you uh, where your eyes, where, where you should be looking. It's really, really cool. You get to see it cleaving, which is like it loses its ice. So there's not very many years that the Hubbard Glacier is gonna be in existence. So you definitely wanna get out and see it while you still can. That is basically the Alaska cruise in a nutshell. If you want a little bit more information, if you want to know a little bit more about exact excursions or um, onboard activities or things like that, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email is christina at showcasetheworld.com. I would be happy to help you plan your Alaska cruise. Thank you so much for joining me and don't forget, explore the world together. Need help planning your next family vacation? Visit us at showcasetheworld.com to request a quote or schedule a free vacation consultation. Want more great travel tips? You'll find those there too.